going on, Cal? What you got going on? Um, I'm actually just typing a shipping label. This is uh, going out today, this AP. So this is a beautiful Audemars Piquet. Um, this is a Royal Oak Offshore Jarno Truly Edition. Uh, came out originally in the early 2000s and it's all carbon forged, so check it out. It has the original Jarno Truly limited edition box. You open it, all light. Beautiful forged, so forged carbon. That's nice. Yep, it's gorgeous. Comes complete with the box booklets, and this bad boy is going out today. So I figure maybe what we could talk about, uh, since it's happening in the business anyway, and maybe it can help others, is how to do deals with private counterparties and stay safe. You know, it's easier to do business with big box dealers because they have brick and mortar stores. But if you really want to get good at investing and you really want to find deals, you have to get good at dealing with people who are private investors, private collectors, and private counterparties. And I know it can seem intimidating, especially when you're starting out, but the goal of this is to make this seamless for you based on my 12 plus years in this industry to help you so that you get to the point where you're so confident you can go ahead and buy a $35,000 AP or sell one and do it with someone who's an individual in a seamless manner. So let's get to my five tips on how to best protect yourself when doing a private deal and shipping one out, all right? Number one, research your counterparty. Do some light work in terms of going online, type in the person's name, ask them for information about themselves so you can determine if this person is exactly who they say they are. In this day and age of the internet, it shouldn't be hard to make sure that you're aligned with the person who you're talking to. So whether you're buying off of someone who's posted on a watch forum, or you're buying off of a platform like eBay, or Chrono24, or you just found someone on Craigslist, there's ways to connect with people that is comfortable for them, that shows you they are who they are. So let's just say your name is John Smith, and I'm talking to you and I wanna buy a watch from you. I'll say, is there anywhere I can check out, you know, somewhere online where we can connect so we can feel comfortable with this. And they'll go, yeah, you can see I'm an attorney in Miami. And you Google it and that person pops up. Maybe if they are someone who's a collector, they have a username or handle on eBay, on Chrono24, on Watch Recon, et cetera, where you can match their username across different platforms and see how many posts they have, how often they're on and how frequently they're involved. I remember one time I connected with this awesome guy who is a Porsche um, enthusiast, and he wasn't on a lot of the watch forums. He had very minimum feedback on the watch forums, but I just Googled his name, Googled a little bit about him. Turns out he's very well known uh, on Renlist in the Porsche forums, and is a great guy and has done some really cool stuff driving across the United States, the fastest ever in a Mercedes. So you learn a little bit about the person and you get comfortable with the person you're transacting with. So always buy the seller, take that key, Write it down, that is the clip for this, by the seller. If it makes you comfortable, ask them for a FaceTime call. Get on the phone and be like, hey man, for the first deal, just so I feel comfortable wiring you $100,000, $10,000, whatever it is, can we just get on the phone? Can I see the piece in your possession? Can I see you holding it up? Can we talk? 98% of the time, 98% of the time, people who have something to hide are going to dance around that. They're gonna to try to hide what they're doing, who they are, if someone wants to sell a multi-thousand dollar watch and really wants to do the business, they're gonna hop on the phone, guys, trust me. So that's a really good hack, because all you're really trying to do is figure out if this person's gonna actually say yes or not. If they start going, uh, oh, whoa, 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 red flag, yellow flag, right? But if they're like, yeah, no problem, we can arrange some time, I'll hop on my phone call or Google voice chat or whatever. So buy the seller, that's number one. Number two, Payment. So when you are wiring or shipping someone or you want to sell a watch and it's a counterparty who's a private seller or private buyer, when you are the person buying, make sure you are only accepting bank wires and cash in person. Now a lot of you will be like, oh, well, can I accept credit card? Can I do PayPal? Can I do Venmo? It's risky. You can get chargebacks on those platforms from people. They can pull a fast one on you, get a watch in hand, say they never received it, say something's wrong with it, go to their credit card company, go to these entities like PayPal and say, hey, I didn't get the services I desire, I wanna charge back and they'll get your watch for free. So how do I eliminate that? When I am the person selling, only take wire, 
only take cash in person. If you've done business with the person in the past and you trust them and you've done multiple business, you can do PayPal, but try to do friends and family so you don't get hit with fees. Here's a recent example of a guy who I've done business with in the past who's getting this AP journal truly who pay me via PayPal. And 90% of the time I don't allow that, but he's done good business with me before, so this time I'll accept it. Now when you are buying a watch, on the flip side, it's okay to use PayPal because you get protection through PayPal. So you should actually push to do that. You could do bank check in person with the person as long as the teller is writing that bank check and you see the teller write the bank check because people will create false checks, which is dangerous, so don't take any forms of checks usually. You can pay someone in cash, you can pay someone with a wire. When you're buying, you can pay multiple ways, whatever's more beneficial to you, and just see what they're willing to take. Most private people want to do creative payment, um, and honestly, you have to just do your research on buying the person you're actually buying from in order to protect yourself, because if you're gonna wire someone before you get the watch in hand, you really want to make sure that their reputation is worth more than a $10,000, $100,000 that something could go wrong and they're not gonna help you fix it. Have someone on standby who's your watchmaker or independent dealer that you can go to when you get this watch in hand. Run it over to them and see if it's authentic, see if it needs any service, and immediately text the person, film, take video, take photo, and make sure it all checks out. Number three, I always wanna make sure that I'm documenting what's going on with the timepiece before I ship it, if that person bought it for me, or when I first receive it. So what will I do? I'll actually take a photo, take videos, show the pieces in working order, show it's keeping time, show the condition, show the serial number on the back of the watch, show it matches the books. Why? You're not gonna share this with anyone. You have it as proof so that if anyone tries to pull a fast one on you when they get the watch, you can double check your records, right? If a credit card company says, this person says they never received the watch and you have shipping that says it was received and you see that the serial numbers match, then you have proof and you can defend yourself, right? So take some videos, it's a chronograph, you can actually actuate the chronograph, show that it's working. If you get it in, actuate the chronograph and make sure it runs over 15 seconds because they can have faulty issues if it's under 15 seconds. So these little things can help you really do quality business and make sure you're getting everything out of the way up front when you first receive the piece or when you're shipping the piece and avoid these conflicts where you just shipped it out and something happened and now it's your word against theirs, okay? Number four, always ship insured if you can. There's this common misunderstanding that if you go to USPS or UPS or FedEx, you're covered for insurance on a lot of the things that they have for shipping. And it's not true. USPS is probably the only one, if you don't have an account, that will allow you to do registered mail, which can be insured. But USPS is the worst option. You should never use USPS ever when you're shipping a high-end piece. Never, ever, ever. If you have a problem and you told me you ship via USPS, you can just kick yourself in the ass and leave. It's your fault, okay? Uh, UPS is okay. FedEx is the lesser of the three evils and is usually the one that's on time. So I will do it through FedEx, but even more important, I will sign up for third-party shipping insurance through someone like IFS InfoSure, excellent company, that offers customer service and very inexpensive coverage for these timepieces. So as long as you're not someone who's only doing it once in a lifetime, you should sign up and invest in this because it's literally gonna save you money shipping the watch, you know, maybe like anywhere from 30 to $250 max based on what type of piece you're shipping. Like if I'm shipping a $400,000 watch and it's in a huge case and it's a big weighted package, then yeah, it's gonna cost a little money, but it's worth it because if this package gets lost, if something happens, you get paid out the full amount. FedEx doesn't do that. They only cover up to $2,000 in shipping. The other thing is you wanna take a picture of the drop-off receipt and you wanna package it double boxed, super clean, super safe. I'm gonna show you how to do that later when we go to drop off this watch for sale because it's very important you do this. This is a very small step and doing things like checking off adult signature and potentially even shipping it to another FedEx location for a holdout location are all ways to eliminate risk. Doing it priority overnight, maybe a little extra, maybe $13 extra, guess what? Fucking worth it because if that goes to two different steps between three different FedExes and goes a little extra time on the truck or on the plane, one more step of risk, okay? Number five. Meet in a predetermined public place. 
Now, if you're shipping and you don't need to meet this person who's a private seller or buyer anywhere in person, that's fine. You can do a lot of business online nowadays. That is the beauty of all this, but there's gonna be plenty of times where you wanna see the watch in person or someone's local to you and you wanna meet them and get the deal done. The ways to be safe, ladies and gentlemen, is to meet at a place that's predetermined, where you control where you're meeting, and is a place where you can actually have access to public cameras and safety. So my top pick, and I'll give you a few recommendations, is if I'm meeting someone brand new and I want to question the authenticity of the watch or want to make sure it's working properly, I'll actually call up my independent dealer down the street and say, hey, heads up, I'm meeting this guy, can I please pop in, pay a few bucks to just check the watch out and make sure everything's okay. They're like, absolutely, because I throw them a lot of business, they do my repairs, they do my polishes, and it's awesome because it's a safe place, they have security cameras everywhere, I can do cash deals, I can do an exchange, and the watchmaker's right there to check the watch. That is my favorite place. And what I'll do is I'll tell someone, meet me there at 2 p.m., but I'll show up at 1.30. Why? I can scope out the place, I can feel comfortable, I can think about what's going on. I have the control. When you have the control in the situation, you set the terms, you get things done much more safely. You don't want to be in a position where someone's saying, hey, meet me at this address. Hey, meet me at my house. Hey, I'll pay, this has happened, I'll pay for a flight for you to fly to Italy and I'll do a deal with you. And you're like, you know what? Shit, he's paying for my flight. Why don't I go? I'll make like six grand on the watch profit. Dude, I've had people get robbed in hotels because the person's willing to pay for a thousand dollar flight and robs them of about $60,000 in watches. Don't do it. Set the terms, make sure that you pick where you're going. You can also call up your local police station, which usually allows you um, security to do those types of transactions. You can actually go to your bank, because a lot of the banks that you have, as long as you tell them you're coming and a customer, have counting rooms for money. Excellent idea, they have security cameras, right? Uh, bring a pen with you, that's one of those lights or those pens that will allow you to check bills although the bank can do it for you too. And uh, my other spot that I go is if I know the person or I'm more comfortable with them, like I'm about to today when I sell this Rolex to one of my um, customers and buddies, is I'll go to a Starbucks. It's public, it's easy going. I know nothing really bad's gonna go down. I know the guy once or twice, so I'm not really as stressed. And it's convenient because it's right near where I'm shipping. So public places, predetermined, your choice, are always a great bet, guys. It'll save you a lot of time. It'll help you from uh, getting shanked or stabbed or killed, which unfortunately happens to people. And always plan an exit. If it's something that you still feel a little uncomfortable with and it's a big transaction and you can't do it, let's say, at a police station or somewhere really secure, map out your exit. Bring someone else with you. Have the car nearby. Think about these things. It will literally save you a huge headache and maybe your life, okay? So let's go, I'm gonna go ship a watch, show you how to get it done properly, and we're also gonna meet someone and do a deal in person, all right? So guys, I'm just gonna go meet with my counterparty that I sold this Rolex to. I've done business with him before, he's a good dude, so it's at a public spot, and we'll see how it goes. Follow me. shot me a bank wire before we got here just for the record. So yeah. it's not like he's getting free gifts. Yeah. Cards. Pretty well. This is better in my opinion. Works for me. Yeah. Cards on the back. You say what's that? That's another reason I like this. No employees, no no landlords. Just money. Just Phone, this and nothing else. Todd is, uh, I think he's a hundred K member, right? You didn't hit a hundred. Oh no, you, you were like like forty seventy five somewhere around seventy five. I think I'm 
I think right now I'm trajectory in, almost 70. I got about 40 left to go to hit it. Okay, so you're doing real good this year because I remember we did a, we was talking about mm -hmm. it. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've probably good. done another 20 since then, but no. oh, nice. Not this has actually been my best month. Um, 20, 20, 20 K in what, what, a, what time period? Like three months, less than three months. Um, way less than three. Yeah, so 20 K in less than three months. Yeah, this was nice. a good, this month was, yeah. So technically, I started in November, so I won't hit it, but. <laughs> When I put the, but the rolling, yeah. When I put the pedal down in March is when I started getting some stuff. So, so there you have it, guys. That's how you drop off and watch. We're also going to ship one too, so you can see how that goes. So just follow me over. How you doing? That? Actually, going to go ship huh. this watch. So guys, when you ship a watch, you want to make sure it's double boxed. Usually in a FedEx Express package to make sure it's safe and secure. Wrap it up so the people that you're dropping it off to don't see what it is and print out insured labels. One on the inside, one on the outside. Um, I'm gonna make sure that I take video and photo of this watch before I send it so it's in working order and the person can't debate that. And I'm also gonna get a drop off receipt. Why? Because if anyone has a question whether I actually dropped it off or not, just extra insurance, okay? So I'll see you on the outside. Thank you. have it guys that's the way to ship insured be careful be safe do deals for private counterparties as easy as you can like share subscribe below got plenty of good content coming your way i'm excited to share more info with you peace